Financing, folks. Financing. That is a hot topic in real estate because we, we obviously would like to be able to get loans so we can invest. We could build our portfolios. We could buy properties, right? A lot of people need financing to buy properties. But it's not all the same. We're not all in the same situation, right? We have people in two different camps, two very different camps, okay? We got self-employed folks, and we got W-2 folks, right? People that are getting self-employed income, the way they qualify for mortgages is going to be different than the way people with W-2 income qualify for mortgages. And today I'm going to talk about those differences. So depending on you and your specific situation, you can understand exactly where you're at in regards to getting a loan. This could affect you, right? Maybe it is or is not appropriate for you to change jobs or careers at this time based upon what you'd like to do with real estate in trying to get said financing. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. I am your boy, Tyler. I'm just kidding. I'm James Wise. It's the Ask James Wise Show. If I was Tyler, that'd be dumb. It'd be like, why, why wouldn't it be Ask Tyler? That You know what I'm saying? That, come on, man. Pay attention. Anyway, folks, what we do on this show is we unpack topics in real estate. We answer the hot topic questions. We help you all along, right? I've sold $200 million in real estate, uh, so I know a thing or two about real estate investing in real estate by the way if you're interested in investing in real estate with my company click the link below to book a call we can help you but not what today's about no 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 today's about just helping you with some free education right got this question right one of the holton wise tv subscribers gave us this question and i thought it was a great thing to discuss i'd love to discuss this because there are a lot of nuances to this and i feel like financing is like the most important thing for new uh, home buyers, home investors to understand, right? That's the building block to the whole thing, right? So this dude, Peyton Adams, uh, he goes, can I still get financing if I have under two years with my employer? I've been in the same field for the last five years, just started my LLC about 10 months ago now, working for myself, right? And this is a great question. There's a lot to unpack here, right? So you have, he's doing two things, right? He's switching uh, from two different camps, right? The two main camps, as I said, right, earlier. You got your W-2 folks, people that work for other people, have a regular job. And then you have the people, uh, like myself, business owners that own their own businesses, right? People that run their own companies, okay? These qualifications for getting mortgages, folks, could not be any different, right? Very often, we get a lot of people that are like, you know, they're reaching out to us like, oh, you know, I want to quit my job and invest in real estate. Most of the time, I tell them, well, that's great, bro. I'm glad you want to invest in real estate. But the first thing you need to do if you want to become a real estate investor is not quit your job, okay? Because that really can throw a monkey wrench into a lot of your plans. So here's the deal. If you are a W-2 to income employee, folks, that is the best possible scenario for you uh, in regards to being able to qualify for loans, right? You have the least amount of hoops to jump through, the least amount of hurdles. Things are very easy for you. And as a matter of fact, you can jump from job to job to job without really worrying about screwing up your chances at getting a house, right? If you have W-2 to income, all you need to do typically, right, I mean, like, without saying, folks, you need to have a debt-to-income ratio that makes sense, and you need to have a high enough credit score, right? But, so just in, in both scenarios, so just push that aside, right? Assume everybody already has both of those two things. If you don't got both of you don't got either of those, you're not getting a loan either way, folks, okay? So assuming uh, both sides have this, right? If you're a W-2 income, say you work at... Uh, I don't know, let's say gas station, right? Just keep it easy. Say you are like BP, okay? You're working at BP, and you've been working there for 10 years. And then uh, you're thinking about buying this house, but right before you want to buy the house, maybe five months before you buy the house, you're like, oh, dude, I don't want to work at BP anymore. I want to work at Speedway now. They're a more doper gas station. So you switch jobs, and now you work at Speedway. 
and then you decide to get your house. All you need to do to qualify, right, assuming like the income and stuff, it all makes sense, you just need to show two pay stubs typically, right? So if you're getting paid biweekly, it's like a month, right? So if you're a W-2 income employee, you could transition from job to job and only show a month of employment at the new employer, and you're still fine. That the, They'll count that all as the same, just like had you worked at the same company. It's totally cool, totally easy. Now, when you do things like this guy did, like my dude Peyton here did, totally different, right? So this guy was working for an employer for two years, or no, he was working for the employer for five years, and he's wondering if he have to wait two years because now he's at a new business, but it's his own business. And the answer is, yeah, dog, you do got to wait two years. See, that old company, right, whatever you're doing, you are working there for five years, and you uh, switched 10 months ago, okay? If you quit that job and then you got a different job working for a different employer on an hourly or salary basis, you would be able to get a loan right now, okay? You've been doing it for 10 months. They would have no issue providing you a loan. But for this guy, Peyton, it's not possible right now. He does have to wait two years because if you make the jump from W-2 to self-employed income, they now want to see two years of tax returns. They don't care about just seeing two bi-weekly paychecks or two weekly paychecks. They need to see two years of tax returns. So if he made this switch, working for one company, getting a paycheck every week or every two weeks, to a new company, he would be fine. But because he's self-employed, he's got to wait two years now. Nothing he can do, right? So a lot of you need to think about that, right? If you decide to be, quit your job and become a full-time investor, well, guess what? You better have a lot of cash because you ain't getting any loans, dude, because you ain't got no full-time investor income, right? And if you do start generating some full-time investor income, you need to wait until you get through two complete tax cycles, okay? Uh, second thing to note, the two-year thing, right? Not only does two years of income need to be had to qualify uh, for mortgages for self-employed individuals, that also needs to happen for people on a primarily commission pay structure, right? So if your primary pay from your employer is hourly or salary, two paychecks, right? Usually a month, that's it, because most people pay every two weeks. But I guess, honestly, if they're paying every week, you only really need to wait two weeks. You just need two pay periods, typically. If it's self-employed, two years. And guess what? If it's commission-based, also two years, right? So say you're making, let's just easy math, 20 bucks an hour, uh, and you get 10% on whatever you sell. Let's say that's your, your pay structure, right, uh, at your new job. They will count your $20 an hour, your base pay, that's all you'll get to count is your qualifications for a mortgage if it's under two years. If it's over two years, then they'll count the commission in addition, right? So if you go to a new job and it's 100% commission, until you hit two years, folks, you have no income to show that lender to qualify for that loan, right? So this is very important for you guys to understand. If you're thinking about making the jump to become self-employed or making the jump in an industry where it's commission only, you can't get those loans until you have at least two complete years of commission income or self-employed income. So for a lot of you people wanting to quit that nine-to-five job, nine-to-five job to become a full-time investor, that might be the absolute worst decision you could ever make in your real estate investing career, right? I see people all the time, like myself, I'm an investor, I'm a real estate broker. I see people all the time like, yo, if I want to be like you, if I want to be a full-time investor, a full-time real estate broker, get my business started, should I just quit my job? No, right? Because your real estate commissions, which you need, right, to continue to fund your investing, well, guess what? None of those are going to count for the first two years in regards to getting loans, right? Folks, especially if you're investing in uh, like residential real estate, one to four units, you're able to get 10 of the greatest mortgages of all time, right? Uh, single family residential financing, I guess we'll call it, right? It's traditional financing, okay? It's 30 years, low interest, fixed interest. If it's not owner-occupied, typically you put down 25%. If it's owner-occupied, you can put down anywhere between 1% and 10%, right? Those are the best loans ever, okay? 
but you only get 10 of them. So I would never recommend anybody go into full-time investor mode or full-time self-income mode if they're trying to buy rental properties or any type of properties, second homes, primary homes, anything. Would not recommend anybody does that until they've exhausted all of their mortgages, folks. That W-2 income is not going to be a hurdle for you people trying to get in the game full-time. W-2 income makes getting financing so much easier in a big portion of the real estate industry, folks, is the financing. That is why I believe real estate is one of the best investment vehicles possible. There is no other way to get 30-year fixed interest, low interest financing other than in real estate, folks. So if you're thinking about buying your first home, your next home, your first rental, make sure you take an assessment of your particular situation. And if you're considering Moving out of your current job, focus on how that's going to affect your ability to qualify for said mortgage. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.